assault somebody. Now, assaults and murder are illegal in our society, and I think all of us would agree those are good laws. We should have those laws on the books. But when you invoke the defense of self-defense, mm -hmm. you're saying that the situation was such that I had to do what I had to do to preserve myself. And so what we're saying is we've got these institutionalized forms of jury nullification, but we need to allow the jury to nullify any law. It's not just when you're claiming self-defense. Yeah. It's when you're looking at drug laws, prostitution laws, gun laws, any law should have the same scrutiny applied to it by the jury. Yeah, that, that's where I was going with my next question here. So all of a sudden I get called to jury duty. Um, what can I do to prepare myself and to, to know what my rights are? Because they're not really telling you that once you get into that courtroom. And so what would you suggest? Well, first I would suggest read Justice Goodlow's essay. It's mm -hmm. fairly short. It's only about uh, uh, 30 pages. And it will give you uh, not only the uh, history of how the doctrine of jury nullification came to this country and how the early Americans all believed in it and applied it, but it will also give, in the newest edition, the present day constitutional authority for it. There are um, and I'll hold this one up again, it'll soon be published. Mm -hmm. There are 24 state just, constitutions. Just, just give him time okay. to pick that up. Okay, and I'll hold it steady. Cool. There are 24 state constitutions that still have explicit jury nullification uh, in them, and this book uh, lists them and uh, quotes these provisions. Mm -hmm. So first you need to know that you do have the right mm -hmm. to judge the law. But second, you all, a juror also needs to understand that our present legal system does not like this doctrine, and they do two things. Number one, they try to conceal it because it's not taught in school, not even in law school anymore. It's not taught to judges. Judges believe it is something from history that no longer applies. And the second thing they will do besides ignoring it and trying to keep information from you is they will give you what I would consider to be false information. Mm -hmm. The judge will falsely instruct. He will tell you, you must accept my instructions as I dictate. Exactly. It will say, you cannot let your conscience influence your verdict. You must apply the law as I dictate to the facts that I have allowed into evidence. Mm -hmm. So knowing this beforehand, you need to be in some ways steeled against that so that you know what they're going to say, but you also know your own rights. And there's about two things you could do. You could either be very quiet and be strong in yourself and be like Clark Kent. Clark Kent is the mild-mannered reporter, but when the time comes, he becomes Superman. And when you're on the jury, if you've gone through the voir dire process and been quiet, and then you're on the jury, and it comes right down to doing justice or not doing justice, then you become Superman. And yeah. you begin trying to let the other jurors know how you feel, what your vision of justice is, ask if it's theirs, and try to, uh, if in the appropriate case, come to an acquittal or to a conviction. Mm -hmm. For instance, in the Diallo case, I believe if the jurors had gotten the instruction that they could vote their conscience, they would have convicted the police officers. Yeah. Um, a conviction, an acquittal, or hanging the jury. Having a hung jury, a hung verdict, is not bad. You have done your duty, and again, like uh, Pat has mentioned, this sends a message. A long series of hung verdicts send a message to the politicians that maybe there's time for changes in the mm -hmm. law. That's one thing. Uh, I should get to the other thing you can do, uh, besides Clark Kent. You can, during voir dire, when the pool is being questioned, and the judges sometimes ask very pointed questions. And they might even ask, they're afraid to ask if you know about jury nullification, because then they might have to explain it, and then they tell everybody what it is, mm -hmm. all nighty jurors. Uh, they might ask, can you follow my, is there anybody who would have trouble following my instructions as I dictate? Does anybody have trouble putting their conscience aside? At that point, you could raise your hand. And you could, and they'll try to call you up to sidebar to talk to you privately so mm -hmm. nobody else hears. But you could just jump up and say, Judge, I have a problem because I believe I have the right to vote my conscience. And everyone in this room does, as an American and a sovereign citizen. That is our role. We are a check and balance. Uh, against the government in some ways to ensure that there is justice and not oppression. And I will vote my conscience no matter what, and I would really expect everyone else here to do the same. 
he will shut you down pretty quickly yeah. and say, thank you very much for your lecture. And he might try to make fun of you mm -hmm. because he wants to take away the power of what you've said. That you have. Yeah. And he'll d dismiss you and get you out of there. And a bailiff will come get you by the arm and take you out. But if their hearts are prepared or if the time is right or the spirit of God has moved, mm -hmm. those other people will hear that. And it will make a difference to the rest of the pool. And the judge has the choice then of either trying to seat a jury of 12 out of that pool, or he might say, and they have in certain cases yeah. said, the pool is tainted. All 90 or 100 people are tainted. I don't want any of these people on this yeah. jury because I may not be able to control mm -hmm. them. And then they have to send everybody home and get a new jury. And maybe there'll be another person who stands up and says the same thing. Um, we can only do what we are in a position to do. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've kind of outlined two different routes that may accomplish the same thing, justice. Either be it's quiet. Role. I have to be quiet. I'm either sorry. be quiet and become mm -hmm. Superman later or mm -hmm. become like Gideon's trumpet. You stand up and you trumpet the truth in front of everyone. I'm not saying this is without risk. It will take courage because as we uh, recede farther and farther away from constitutional principles and from just laws, Judges try to punish jurors yeah. for exercising their rights. And we're getting back to those times before William Penn mm -hmm. when they would tell the jury, you vote our way like we tell you or we punish you. Mm -hmm. This is sad. There's been more intrusion into the jury room also. Yeah. There is now more um, oh, encouragement of other jurors to send notes to the court, for example, and advise them that there's this recalcitrant renegade juror in here yeah. that's talking about how uh, the law isn't right and maybe we should re-examine this law and the instructions say we can't do that. Exactly. Yeah. And then the juror uh, may get in trouble or they may declare a mistrial based on that. And so uh, times have become very bad for jurors. One thing that jurors can do, safely do, in the jury room is to stick to what is allowed which is reasonable doubt. Um, I have reasonable doubt about these facts. Remember, jurors are instructed always that they can judge the facts. That is well accepted. That mm -hmm. is not debated by judges and the system. So that in the jury room, if you're always connected to the facts, if you're always examining the facts in front of your fellow jurors and finding reasonable doubt, those are the buzzwords mm -hmm. in a criminal trial, if you find reasonable doubt, then you probably aren't going to be questioned because you're living in the paradigm of the establishment. Ah, yeah. But but I'm glad you got back to that because a while ago I whispered to you, here's on a roll, I, didn't, I needed to say something there. Mm. But now we get right back to that. But you see, what you, what you say, you go by the facts. But earlier he was talking about your conscience. If your conscience mm -hmm. and the facts don't mix, then you do have the right to... You have the right to vote your you conscience. Should, yeah. You, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's in some ways beyond the Constitution, or how should I say, it's foundational, uh, primordial in a way. The Constitution says, we the people do mm -hmm. ordain mm -hmm. and establish this Constitution. The people made the Constitution, and there's about 40 state constitutions that says all political power is inherent in the people. The people have all power. They have given up some of their power to government to do specific things. But the power to judge the law on juries, they have retained. The people have never, anywhere, given up their inherent, primordial, fundamental, historic, and prehistoric power to judge the law when they sit on juries. We must remember, the jury is thousands of years old. It's not a new institution. Mm -hmm. uh, it arises with the earliest civilizations as a way, again, to balance the government and to mm -hmm. get the consensus of people involved in the laws to have a government and civilization that is not just based on brute force and oppression, and not just based on the richest members of the community controlling the community, because the jury is, again, chosen at random, and it would have rich and poor and middle class alike on there, with their very different views of the world and their different way of viewing the same fact. A certain fact can mean different things to different people depending on uh, what their life has been, what their lifestyle and their experiences have been. Yeah, like the like the elephant story. You look, five people look at an elephant, and each one of them sees a different mm -hmm. different piece like that. Now, 
I, I do know that you, you have brought some books and uh, mm -hmm. we could maybe recommend some of those. And then I would like to go to maybe one or two cases that um, everybody's familiar with, like the Georgian. Is that, can't pronounce yeah, his name? Kevorkian. Kevorkian, I can't pronounce his name either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you have a book there. We, we don't have to pick that up. It's called We the Jury. Yes, um, that's right. That's available in bookstores and the library. Yes, it is. Um, it is available from Prometheus Books. It's also in the libraries. It's available from the Fully Informed Jury Association, mm -hmm. and I believe their number and their it website is, um, is available. Mm -hmm. And these are great jury trials in history that made mm -hmm. a difference, uh, turning points in history, where a jury made a decision that affected the whole course of the country afterwards. And the William Penn case mm -hmm. will be in here. Uh, there will be the John Peter Zenger case in the United States, a freedom of speech case. Uh, there will be Fugitive Slave Act cases where the juries defeated the Fugitive Slave Act. Mm -hmm. They defeated alcohol prohibition. He gives the examples of how ordinary people have, you know, risen above their normal station in life to become champions. Mm -hmm. And then the next... Uh, Tom, oh. I don't mean to interrupt, oh. but we should give some kudos to the author, Godfrey Lehman, yeah. uh, if I may. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Godfrey Lehman is a, an older gentleman. He lives in San Francisco, and he is probably one of the top uh, experts on the jury system, mm -hmm. both from a historical standpoint, a legal standpoint, a moral standpoint. He has written extensively on juries, and so this book is really a gem. It mm -hmm. is also, by the way, available from Lazy Fair Books. Maybe some of your readers get their catalog, and so they did carry yeah. his book. Yeah, we can put that out there. I, I don't know exactly. And then this one, um, the, the, my book is there too because I look at some of these things from my perception, and some mm -hmm. it's my life story, so I've run into a thing or two in my lifetime, and that's why my book is there, and the moral of the story is. And this one is, what is this one? I can't see that. That's Clay Conrad's book, mm -hmm. I believe. Maybe we could say something about that for a minute. I, I should defer to you. I've been talking quite a bit. <laughs> well, I'll defer to you to tell me what the title of Clay's book oh, is, because I can't, I can't see Jury it. Nullification, the Evolution of a Doctrine. Yes. And there you go. That's a not guilty on the cover. <laughs> it's an excellent book also. Mm -hmm. It's a book that <coughs> probably should be on the uh, shelves of every law library. and. It should be used extensively in the teachings in constitutional law. It's, it's a textbook mm -hmm. of jury nullification. It's written by a man who's on the board of directors of the Fully Informed Jury Association, Clay Conrad. And he lives in Texas. He's a practicing attorney. It's a great book. It will give you a very well-rounded view of what jury nullification is and what the juries are all about in a way that is very understandable. It is a little different from Godfrey's book. Godfrey's is a little more anecdotal, or I should say case specific, and Clay's is more of a textbook approach. Mm -hmm. But they're both wonderful books. And then I want to give you credit here on, on the essay here. You was one of the one of the people that um, did the research for some of this. What uh, what I did was a lot of the research had already been done, and I was a citation checker. In a way, that's like a legal gopher. What you ah. do is there's a citation, mm -hmm. and other people have come up with the citation or discovered it, but uh, human beings having certain frailties right. and the light being bad at night or whatever, they might have gotten the citation wrong, or the legal passage may not say exactly what they have represented to say in the past. And my job was to look up as many of these sites as humanly possible that you could find in law libraries and on the internet and make sure everything was correct. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while I would find certain things that were uh, another gem sometimes was in that citation that needed to be brought out. So that was largely my role uh, originally. What has happened since then is that uh, the Fully Informed Jury Association felt that the current constitutions that are on the books today, that those provisions should be brought out explicitly. And so I wrote first a letter to the Washington State Bar News, a lengthy one, and then uh, that was later worked into a preface to Justice Goodloe's essay, this, this essay. Mm -hmm. And that uh, it will be in the new edition. Yeah, now see, gopher is always good because that's how we can find out what we're made of because we are not, we're not handicapped just like when we do these shows. You mm -hmm. know, we can speak our mind and everything. 
and it is so Im important that the jury has all the facts because we're going to build up to a cliffhanger here because in a few weeks uh, you